Hello guys, this is Universal Giant. I've gotten a couple of questions about how I edited the backgrounds in my Soul Silver Let's Play, so I wanted to dedicate a video to explaining how I went about doing it. But before I get into that, I want to say that I'm by no means an expert on either the video editor or the image editor, especially Photoshop. In fact, there are a couple of things that you guys could probably teach me about the program, so if you have any comments on that, please let me know. But before I get into how I made the backgrounds, I just want to explain a little bit about how everything's going to come together, and then when I get into the backgrounds, we'll come back to the video editor so I piece everything together. Just to give you a little bit of background, as you can see, there's a lot going on in the video editor here, and we're taking a look at the finale right now. The two screens that you see active right now are the top and bottom screens of the DS, and each of these I had to specifically position using a combination of the event pan crop here, which I've created presets for each of them. So for the left side, to have the top screen on the left, three times magnification, I set it to this. And likewise, if I wanted the bottom screen on the bottom right section, I have a preset for that too. You have to play around with resizing the window to get everything to work out properly. You can see I resized this so it wasn't stretched out too much on the screen itself, but you gotta play around with it a little bit. And I also use the tool over here, Track Motion, which helps you reposition where that video is on the screen. And although it doesn't always update immediately where it is, I did actually move this around a couple of different places to make sure it fits, and depending on which of my presets I choose, it would move this around on the screen over here. For some reason it's not updating right now, but and pretend that it does. Next you have the background layer down here, which I have behind everything, and the background includes everything besides the two screens of the DS, and the current Pokémon I have in the active spot which is on these tracks up here. Now, I had to actually separate the animated sprite from the background images because the images are static. So when I go back to make backgrounds, I have to physically leave out the Pokémon that I want to have in the lead spot. So now that I, we know exactly what I want to do with the backgrounds, we'll go to Photoshop here, and this is what I use to make all of the backgrounds for Soul Silver, And... All of the backgrounds that you see are the extent of my knowledge of Photoshop. It's relatively difficult to use if you've never used it before, but it's a very powerful program. So I started off knowing that I wanted to use the animated sprites somehow, and that I wanted to fit both DS screens on screen at the same time, filling up as much space with them as possible. I wanted to stress the game screens themselves and not the background, so I tried to be a little more subtle with the background, with the emphasis on the two green screens here. And that's actually part of the reason why I chose Soul Silver instead of Heart Gold, because I wanted to do a background that was colored the same way as the game would be, and I thought gold would give a little more attention to the background than I wanted. But the background here is just one of the standard textures you can get from Photoshop. It's the metallic pattern. I stretched it out until it was about what I thought looked best. And I have a gradient over it that's white and blue. And this is something I learned in one of Naka's drawing streams a couple of years ago. Where if you want to get a nice clean metallic feel for gray, you don't go from white to gray. You have to have a little bit of blue in there. So that's what I did here. And you'll also Notice that the white on the top left and on the bottom right is not done without reason. I wanted to stress attention on the game screens, and I thought it would be best for me to have the whiter part of the background at the top left and the bottom right, so your attention is drawn to either of these two screens, as opposed to doing the reverse, where you can see it kind of draws attention away from those two screens. So that was done intentionally. And I also wanted to show a distinction between the game screens and the background. So I added a layer of borders around the two screens here. Now these just amount to, I think it's about three pixels 
away from the screen itself, so you can clearly tell where the screens end and where the background begins. And ideally what you would want to do is fill in the boxes with black, so if you ever need to fade to black, you can just, in Vegas, it's a little more tricky to do. So for instance, if I want to have a fade to black transition here, I think it's easiest for me to just draw the thing in here. But if I did it this way, then you can see it doesn't actually fade to black, it fades to the background. So if you wanted to make it easier to fade to black here in the video editor, it's probably easiest for you to just make the whole box black. I left it open just because it would be easier for me to position the screen in there when I was first doing it in the editor. But if you want to go about doing it this way, it's probably best to leave those black as well. So that's where I put the borders in for. And I also knew I wanted to use some, the screen up here so I could put in my Pokemon roster, so if you're just joining the series for the first time, you don't have to wait 10 minutes for me to switch a Pokemon for you to get a couple of seconds glimpse into what my roster is. And I also wanted to put the badges up here somewhere, because when we get into the Kanto region, it's difficult to tell what badges somebody has, because they could get the first six in any order. And initially what I wanted to do was just have the six Pokemon up here and line up the badges on the bottom part of the screen. But when I took a look at it, it just didn't look right. And I knew I wanted to have room for text on the screen, so if I ever needed to correct myself, which happened quite a bit, I would have room to do it on the bottom screen instead of having to overlap the screen with the display on it, because most of the text in the game is displayed on that part of the screen anyway, and I didn't want to obscure it. So I ultimately decided to move the badges up here as well, and that made the boxes for the roster about square anyway. So I had some freedom in terms of what I wanted to put above the top part of the top screen, and the only thing I could think of was the Unigiant plays Soul Silver, And the this one, I played around with this to make it look as close to the text for the Soul Silver logo as possible. And next was adding the boxes to have the Pokemon. So for each of these, all I did here was Bevel and Emboss to make it look like it was still part of the background. So even though each of these boxes is going to have one of the Pokemon in our roster, because it still has the same texture as the background behind it, it's as if it's just another part of the texture, so I wanted to leave that in there as well. Although I wanted to do something a little bit different for the badges, so I gave that more of a felty denim feel, because it metal behind badges just didn't look right to me. And of course I had the badges and active roster text above each of those as well. And each of these are modeled after the colors of the Heart Gold and Soul Silver logos, respectively. Although I'm not sure if it was too clear about the Heart Gold colors here. That was the intention. And the boxes? Obviously, if I had, say for this instance, I have Totodile and Sentret in my roster. I do have the backgrounds for each of these boxes colored based on what their type is. And for this, I believe this is Blend Options. I have the same Bevel and Emboss as I had before, but I also added a color overlay, and the pattern overlay I needed to add because without this it's just the plain color overlay and it obscured the texture a little bit more than I wanted it to. So I have the same pattern behind it so it doesn't... Without it, if I wanted to still have the effect of the color, it wouldn't be nearly as prominent without the overlay. So this is up to 70% opacity, and I have the pattern enabled for it as well. And every time I make the background for one of these boxes, I have it saved as a different style. So see, you can have the water background, I have the electric steel background for Magnezone, and so on for all of the other ones that I have. Now they aren't all here because I had to change computers multiple times throughout the project, and as a result, I lost my presets every time. 
So I only have saved here the ones that I use most recently. So here we have the water background, and for box two we would have the normal background, which I have over here. And every time I wanted to enable a new badge, I have them all lined up here from the very beginning, so whenever I get a badge all I have to do is make it visible, and there it is. The most difficult part about this, and by difficult I mean tedious, was that whenever I gained a new badge, or whenever I changed my roster, or whenever I just switched the lead Pokémon, because I wanted to have the animated sprite here, and I didn't want to have the sprite dance in front of the other sprite because it just looks awkward, and I'll show that off when we get into the video editor part, I had to leave the spot with the active Pokémon empty. So whenever I had to do this, I go up to File, and I believe it's Save for Web and Devices, but it's just easier for me to Control alt shift s And straight from here, although it takes a little while for Photoshop to do it now that I'm actually recording it, it'll give up, it'll prompt you to save this background here as it is. So every time I would make a single change to the background, now of course I would disable the top and bottom screen preview here so you would just have the background. But if you're putting the screen on top of it anyway, it doesn't really make a difference. I would have to do this for every single time I change the lead Pokémon, or change my roster in any way, or get a new badge. So, having a new background for each one of those cases can get ridiculously tedious. So, if you want to do that for having an animated sprite for every active roster spot, just be aware it will take a little bit of time. I do believe if you use Photoshop in conjunction with Premiere Pro, you don't have to make a new image for every single background that you can work with the layers and such, but I haven't used Premiere Pro, so I don't know too much about how that works. But ultimately, I'll just show off the final background that I wound up using, and as a little bit of an Easter egg for you to show off the fact that I did intend to use Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite, those layers are still here as well. So, there you go, a little bit of, uh, I guess it's an Easter egg, although I don't know if it really qualifies, but whenever I would want to save this, I would just disable the top and bottom preview screens, and then whichever one of these Pokémon was in the lead spot. But this is the background that I wound up using most often, because it had all 16 badges and the main six Pokémon here. So now that we know all about the backgrounds, the question is how do we bring all of this together? And the video editor I've been using for, I want to say, at least the last three years or so is Sony Vegas Pro. And I'm still using 9 because I haven't bothered upgrading yet. But I've already explained where the background fits in and where all of the active Pokémon fit in here. And I also have a line for text up here as well. So for each of these, when you first bring in a new sprite to Sony Vegas, so if I make a new video track here, and I want to say bring in Espeon, it defaults to making it the maximum size. So in order to make it the proper size, I just go to pan crop to see that it's 58 pixels high, and I go over to the track motion, where I set the height to 58 I think it was. So now it's pixel for pixel the exact height, and in order to move it around the screen, I just move it around here with as much fine precision as I can to get it to fit in the exact position I want it to. So just to demonstrate what I mean by that, I wanted to make sure that the sprite lined up with where it was in the background. So, for instance, if I wanted to have HCB in here... Uh, what in the world screwed up here? I think it finally registered the fact that I changed where this was, so let's just move it back. If I wanted to add HCB here, at the very beginning, you can see, if I stretch him out a little bit, that he is now dancing in front of his own sprite. So, although it's difficult to make out because of the size of the screen here, I'll make it a little bigger so it's more obvious that he's dancing in front of his own sprite. 
So you see his static sprite in the background and it just doesn't look right. He's also got a little bit of ghosting in there because I haven't disabled resample for the particular Heracross sprite that I have dancing around in there now. But that's the reason why I wanted to have the clear box behind him before I would put him in. So if I wanted to disable the resample, which is what I would recommend you do if you were recording off of the computer, then that would just get rid of the ghosting. But he's still in front of his own sprite. So if I wanted to do that, so for instance, I have Duster in the lead spot here, the background does not have Furret in that spot. So that's what I did there. And again, each of these, I have presets saved for the position of each of the Pokémon that I used in the last couple of videos here. And... I'm trying to think of whether or not there's anything else to have here. The default for recording the way I have off the emulator, I have three times magnification for both screens, with the top screen on the left and the bottom screen on the right. So the default for bringing it into Sony Vegas is to just have them next to each other the way I have them in the credits. So just be wary of how you have to play around with positioning of the screens, but once you have the positioning taken down, you have presets saved for the location of your sprites, and you have all the necessary presets for the background, and you have saved all of the styles and such that you want, it doesn't take all that long to play around with to get everything set up. It just takes a while to set up. So if you want to do backgrounds for a Let's Play that you know you're going to do, I suggest you get started on it at least a couple of weeks in advance so everything looks as good as you want it to, and then just edit it as you see fit. But getting into the actual editing process, I initially start off editing the same way I would with any other LP. So I don't have the background up, I don't have the sprites up, all I see is the top screen and the bottom screen. And each of these are grouped together, so if I have to make any edit to one or just move it along, all three of them move together. The top screen, the bottom screen, and the game audio. So all of that's synced together if I have to do any kind of editing to it. So I do whatever cropping I need to do, I can trim the section out, I can speed up whatever I see fit. But I also make note of whenever I change my lead party member or change a roster spot. And I do that by just splitting the section of the video, which I do just by hitting S in Sony Vegas, and there it is. You don't notice it in the final product, it just makes it easier for me to spot where the points are I need to change a background. So for instance, here, which is the point when I first head out to face down red, I actually save off screen. So I leave the room, I come back in to save, and then I leave again with HCB in the lead spot. So I know I'll want to switch backgrounds so Duster is no longer in the lead spot where HCB is. So that's why I have this split over here, and I have it in a couple of other places as well. For instance, when I want to change the background between... Uh, for the finale, I had a special background for red, so when I wanted to make that change, I had two markers over here, so it would be easier for me to see where I wanted to do the change in the background color up here. So once I have all of those marked down, then it's just a matter of figuring out which Pokémon I have in the lead spot. So for each of these, I go over the segment to see who is in the lead spot out in front, and usually it's going to be obvious, because you see Klaus on screen here, you would see HCB on screen here, you see Lupus on screen here. So whenever they're on screen, I just have their animated sprite up here. And once I have the sprites figured out, then it's just a matter of determining who is in my roster. And sometimes it's not always clear as other times. So what I do is look for segments of the video where I have the roster on screen, so I can always double check to make sure that I know Crunch, Duster, Krakow, Lupus, HCB, and Klaus are all in the roster. So that's what I do to determine what backgrounds I need to make. And once I have all of those taken care of, then I know which ones to put in here. So without 
boring you in terms of putting together a whole video on screen, I just figured it would be easier for me to explain what my thought process is as I'm going through editing these videos. And on average, I'd say that editing these, once I had all of the backgrounds and sprites taken care of, it didn't take more than maybe twice as long as usual. And before I would publish the video, I would always double check to make sure that the backgrounds were okay. I think I would go every eight seconds or so. So I just speed through the preview like this to make sure that, for instance, when we get to the red fight, that all of the lead Pokemon in the top right preview are correct. So whenever I have Crunch in the front, he is the one that's doing the animation and his background box is empty. So I'd always do this to make sure I wasn't wasting time rendering out a video that was incorrect. And the only other thing that I wanted to mention was where I got the sprites from. Now these sprites are all taken directly from the Black and White, Black 2, White 2, Gen 5 games. And there are a number of different websites that have all of the animated sprites for you, or the back sprites, or whatever. And the best sprite resource I found was this one, Pokemon Elite 2000. Although there are a good number of them that come up whenever you search. Some of them are better than others. And some of them don't have all of the sprites, so you may have to use more than one, but this is the one that I found easiest to use. So you have a list of the ones that are not animated, which are the ones I used for the background, and you have animated versions of them here, as well as shiny sprites and female sprites, whenever the female is different than the male. And I think that pretty much covers everything I did in terms of Soul Silver. so now you have a decent idea as to all the work that went on into editing these videos, and I hope those of you that had those sorts of questions had most of them answered here. But if you didn't, feel free to leave a comment asking me, and I'd be more than happy to answer. But remember, especially when it comes to Photoshop, I'm no expert on this stuff. I'm just showing you what I know how to do. And if you have any advice for me, by all means let me know, because it can only help from this point. But, this is Universal Giant. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it helpful, if you didn't I hope you at least found it entertaining, and I'll see you guys next time.